So somebody suggested that maybe I ought to rent out a theater or a lecture hall and start giving lectures, and I did. I gave one in San Francisco, and it was a success. Then I went and I lectured in uh, Sacramento, and that was a success. I took the riverboat up to Marysville. Somebody said, why didn't you take the train? I said, they don't have saloons on board train. <laughs> and I was in Marysville. I took the stagecoach from Marysville up through Timbuktu, up through Smartville, and Rough and Ready, and I went to Grass Valley, and I stayed at the Holbrook Hotel. And they're very proud of the fact that I stayed there because they named a room after me. If you want to light up, you've got to go out onto the balcony, which wouldn't be so bad, except it looks out over across the street at the Bret Hart Inn. <laughs> Why does he get a whole hotel named after him and I only got one room? <laughs> well, after leaving California, I decided that I was going to be a writer. But uh, there wasn't much claim for writing back in the uh, in out west. And if you wanted to be a serious writer, or to be taken seriously, you had to become part of the Eastern literati. So I went back to New York, and I did some lectures there, and I attempted to get a few books published. And in the meantime, I was hired by another newspaper to be a correspondent on one of the first cruise ships that went over to Europe and to the Holy Land. My cabin mate was a young man by the name of Charlie Langdon. He showed me a picture he carried around with him of his sister, Olivia Langdon. I have never since then got that face out of my mind's eye, and I was swept off my feet. We attended uh, a lecture together and uh, from then on, I decided she was the girl that I was going to marry. And, uh, Libby and I settled down into a nice little cottage in Hartford. While we was living in this house, I was making some good money. I need to invest in stuff. I was always interested in the latest technology. I invested in a steam pulley that was so powerful it pulled $5,000 right out of my pocket. <laughs> and then I invested in the page typesetting machine. And it never really got on the market before the Mugenthaler Press got on and the market was filled. I was out $150,000 when a young friend of mine come to me and he wanted to invest in this new contraption invented by some Alexander Bell. Well, as I say, I was like a burnt child. I wasn't gonna have anything to do with this. It's amazing how the stupid people can become rich when us smart people don't know what we're doing. <laughs> that is one thing I would like to leave with you if you can take home, and that is, I believe the truth is the most precious commodity that we possess. Therefore, we need to economize on it. Thank <laughs> you.